begin with the briefing. I just wanted to draw to everyone's attention. Um, if you had not already heard, the reason that we cancelled the Iraq briefing uh, last week, and that was due to the very sad and unfortunate death of our dear colleague Petya, who is the cluster coordinator in Iraq, who passed away the week before. Um, it became apparent that those of you that were waiting online for the meeting to commence last week had not subscribed to the Shelter Cluster website updates. So I do encourage you all to subscribe to that and then you'll be privy to all the relevant information. Now, Petya was a dear colleague. We've uh, prepared a memorial message. It was disseminated the week before last, including an opportunity for anybody who knew Petya to be able to write a message on the memorial board. Uh, I'll ask Onhel or Kimya to maybe include the link in the chat for those colleagues that have not yet um, received that message. So I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but for those colleagues who are not already aware of this uh, very sad and unfortunate incident. Nevertheless, we'll now commence with the briefing, so I kindly hand over to Brees to begin the presentation. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Brett. Good afternoon, good morning colleagues. Uh, thanks for taking your time to follow up today the update uh, on Burkina Faso Shelter Cluster. Uh, I am Brice Degla, the Shelter Cluster Coordinator. This presentation will be made together with uh, Mr. Zezé Tuaro, who is uh, the coordinator of uh, the, uh, the sub-coordinator of uh, uh, Kaya region. So, uh, the presentation, we, we will try to present the context of Burkina Faso and also explain how the coordination structure work. We'll also to present uh, the, the coordination and guidance tools because the coordination teams had developed during uh, the past year. And at the end, highlight the major challenge we have faced and how we tackle them. Brees, I'm afraid you're frozen. You may want to turn off the camera if that helps. Can you hear me now? Yes, quite well. You, have, you can turn off the oh. camera. Maybe that will help. Okay. So I was saying Burkina Faso is in West Africa and is with is facing a rapid escalation of violence and expansion of armed group. It is one of the fast growing crises. And uh, uh, we, 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 we know that uh, beside the security situation, uh, Burkina also is located in the hottest part of the world. It's located in Sahara Desert. The country is susceptible to drugs. Uh, a severe problem for a nation which is consistently hot. Uh, as of today, we have a massive number of affected population estimate at 3.5 million. Uh, the, the rapid occupancy of unplanned cities land by most of IDPs is also a major concern. Next. So I will show you the response plan overview as of today. Uh, out of the 3.5 million affected population, we have 1.3 uh, million uh, displaced population. Under the humanitarian response plans of 2021, the shelter considered 200 households in need, and we only target, targeted half of this household in need, which is 93,000. And as of June, we only cover 11,000 households. Comparing to the response of last year, we try to improve how we tackle the beneficiaries and how we address 
the modalities of intervention. So comparing to last year, we increased a bit uh, the cash modalities, the monitor, monitoring modalities, which moved from uh, like 6% to 26% this year as, as mid-July. Mid and we also increased a bit the number of host community we, we, we assist. Last year, we assist less than 10%. This year, we actually reached 16%. As of today, uh, out of the target population, we only reached 13 percent of our target population, which make uh, uh, the number of people uh, without uh, uh, assistance very high. Next. In order to make a, a consistent coordination, we as a shelter cluster in the entire cluster coordination group, we ensure that we provide uh, a recommendation and guidance, uh, a recommendation to, to our lead agency representative at the humanitarian country team regularly. And we also ensure our practice constant participation to the entire cluster coordination meeting, which happen every two weeks. The shelter team, we have three dedicated persons, which is the information manager, uh, Mr. Jean-Charles Kizima. And uh, we have at uh, uh, the Central North region, which have almost half of the displaced population caseload, we have Mr. Zeze Tuaro, who is doing the presentation with me today. We also ensure that uh, there is uh, a co-leading mechanism in place so the government, uh, through its uh, emergency agency, have uh, a representative who is attending the meeting as a colleague. And we also ensure that uh, uh, the international NGOs provide a focal point for the co-leading. And we have NRC who uh, uh, put at the disp disposition of the coordination team a staff who is doing assuming this role next the partners we have 70 hrp partners we have also partners out of the hrp we have three un agency 12 international ngos and one local ngos we have one red cross the national uh, society and in order to ensure that uh, the vision and the orientation of the cluster are not done by the cluster team, we ensure that uh, there is uh, uh, a strategic advisory group which have a clear term of reference and which have regular meeting in order to verify the, the planning of the response and verify the vision of the cluster, how it's addressed over the, the year. With the support of series of partners in uh, the, the, the CIS affected region, we have uh, ACF, we have IOM, we have HELP, helping us to do the sub-regional coordination. And with 30% of, of the time of uh, the focal point in those regions, we are, we are maintaining a very good coordination system in place in order to support, to feed the information to the partners in those regions and get on a timely basis uh, the, the situation in those regions. UNSAR committed 100% uh, staff in, uh, in the Central North region and uh, uh, another, uh, we have one of the only lady of the team uh, in Sahel have 30% of the time doing coordination like someone who is doing 100% uh, work and uh, we have an effective coordination in style so far. We have also a technical working group for non-food item issues and another technical working group for shelter issues. Next. Next. I will leave the floor to my colleagues today to present uh, the guidance tool and the orientation tools from here. Zizi. And um, for the proper coordination of a shelter and NFI response in Burkina Faso, 
We do have uh, coordination tools. And here are some of the tools here. We have a monthly response analysis dashboard. And this dashboard show the, the number of IDPs, the number of host community that we target. We also have the number of activity, the activities that has been made by the different partners. And the other tools that we have, we have uh, the mapping access constraint. And this is done every three months in order to inform the cluster partners, the accessibility in many of the locations. I can say here in Burkina Faso, for those who don't know, you know, we, we continuously have arm group uh, impact in many locations that are not uh, be able to be covered by the partners. So we do this to assess the map and, and share for proper planning and inform the partners. We do also have partners capacity assessment. This is done monthly to know exactly what the partners are doing in different locations and what support are they giving to the people of concern in that particular locations. We do also have a quarterly narrative report. This quarterly narrative report gives us a summary of the activities that has been taking place for the three past months. And we also have the quarterly fact sheets. And this fact sheet gives a summary of the activities, the funding level, and the number of partners in different locations. Slides. We also have guidance tools in Burkina Faso. The first one is the operational guide for preparation and response in COVID. Burkina Faso, as, uh, the other, uh, as in the other countries, we also have uh, this COVID that is really affecting operations in Burkina Faso. Don't we have operational guide for preparation and response to COVID-19? We also have Burkina Faso Shelter Cluster Strategy. In this strategy, we have all what have to be done by the partners. These are tools that can guide the partners so we can have a common understanding of the response. We also have the operational guide, guide for the implementation for shelter project at NFI in form of cash transfer in response of the crisis in Burkina Faso. As Briggs was saying, last year we have less cash-based intervention, but this year, in order to uh, proper coordinate the cash-based intervention, a, a document, a guidance, a guide document was prepared so uh, it can be referred by all the partners in the implementation of cash-based interventions. We also have a cash, partners also do a cash market assessment. I think ACTED and NRC and UNHCR will have done a market assessment. This market assessment helps to see exactly where we can get the consortium materials, how much cost the consortium materials. All this can help the partners when they are planning to have more information where they can get the consortium material, how much it's going to cost. Slides? Slides? Here are the shirt topology we are using in Burkina Faso. We have a three type of um, typology that we use here. The first one is the minimum emergency shelter kit. This is given, this is the package of uh, keys that we give to new arrival uh, IDPs for them to just make a makeshift shelter before uh, waiting, before uh, a proper response to be given to them. And the cost of this type of case is just $55 to $55 US dollars. We also have the refugee housing unit. These are the these are tents that we put in place for IDPs and affected host communities, host 
the IDPs. The cost is the one is above $1,000 US. We also have emergency shelter, Shahelian tents. In, in order to respect the culture of the IDPs, I think in some part of the countries, we do put in place a Sahelian shelter, a Sahelian tent, which costs $350 US. We also have a cable frame emergency shelter made with wood and plastic sheeting, which costs $350 also. Slides. We also have this semi-durable shelter, which is made with mud bricks, with windows and doors made with iron sheet or with wood. We also have a durable shelters that is made with mud called Voot Nuvian, and this is a, a eco sh shelters because he's only use mud. He use he, do, he doesn't use um, a, a wooden poles. Slide. And I'm going to give over, here we have also the NFI case. In, after the construction of a shelter, we make sure that the shelter, the NFI is a part of the package that is given to the shelter. These are the attempts that we are giving to the uh, I, uh, IDPs after, after construction of the shelters. Slides. And uh, we do also have a major challenges. I'm going to give over to Brice to talk about the major challenges and the solution that uh, we propose in Burkina Faso. Brice, over to you, please. Thank you, Zeze. Uh, thank you, colleague. Uh, we have series of talent in Burkina Faso while doing the coordination. I will name series of them, not all of them. Uh, one of the major one is uh, the access to land. Uh, before the crisis, 80% of the population already have access, a challenge to access land and uh, good land uh, in series of location. Uh, I mean, land with proper documentation for the land, I mean. And uh, the, the, the movement, the mass displacement increased as I survey this situation with series of unplanned IDP settlement in, uh, in most of uh, the, the capital city of the uh, most affected region. So what the cluster have done so far is to better understand the, the, the need of land so that uh, we can improve our uh, advocacy strategy document together with the cluster protection and uh, the GSAT, which is the equivalent of CCCM cluster, and uh, uh, do a kind of advocacy toward the government official in charge of lands. We also have a discussion with uh, uh, a well-known organization in time of land issues to see how they can do a kind of uh, uh, support to partners in series of, of location to secure better land for, for, for the partners. We developed together with the HLP uh, housing land, house land and property aware uh, a, a, a document to help the practitioners in the different region to know uh, the law tool they can use to reduce the eviction risk and also to secure better land. Next. The second challenge we are facing is, of course, since we are close to the desert Sahara, we are facing uh, a challenge of concerning the environmental issues. And uh, as you know, most of our shelter material construction series of them are bought from Ivory Coast and Niger. And uh, also we are using a lot of uh, wooden poles uh, to do the construction and using charcoal and firewood to make the cooking from in most of the location. At the cluster level, we do not have any expertise to define the country environmental profile. And uh, most of our emergency shelters are covered with plastic sheeting, which is uh, a very big concern in terms of environmental impact. So what have we done so far is to improve 
uh, the, the, the green specification with the emergency shelters by creating better awareness at with uh, all the partners so that they can know uh, which impact they are creating using this type of emergency so they have this awareness and uh, we we also revise most of the typology taking account of the, the, the market the availability of construction market of construction material on the local market so that our design can be more local concept design. We have uh, actually an MOU with all the architects to do a kind of uh, mapping of the uh, uh, of the construction, the, the normal way of building a construction with respect with environment in different regions before the crisis, so that we can we can look at that also to improve our way of working. Uh, the cluster is uh, currently identified on, on, on an expert in environment, so that we can improve our understanding of the country environmental profile. And also we are discussing to see with this expertise how we can consider recycling and repurposing option. Next. Accessibility is also a concern and security uh, and the bad road condition have restrained access to many IDPs locations. So in order to provide assistance, we have to think twice or we have to find a more innovative approach to deal with that. And one of the innovative approaches is that we develop a clear accessibility map, which we update regularly uh, uh, and monitor together with access working group so that we inform the shelter partners to understand how they can cope with this situation of uh, lack of access. We have the support of one national NGOs to train the cluster partners on how to do a remote monitoring of activities, which was great and it helped a lot of partners on how they can make it happen. And we also encourage our focal points to identify NGOs, local NGOs and national actors so that we can continue to improve our preparedness and our planning in a location where we do not have access. Next. Availability as a, of construction material is a challenge also, as I mentioned earlier. So one of the things we are doing also is we have a support of three partners, mainly ACTED, NRC and UNSCR, to do in the CIS region a proper market assessment, which help us to improve our understanding of available material, but which help us also to see the pertinence to go for monetary approach or not. And this helps us to, to, to define better the construction material costs and their availability in series of location. Next. Human resources is also a concern. At the beginning of a crisis, we have series of partners who hire new staff engineers with good background, but without, without any knowledge of how to deal with humanitarian response. So we encourage most of the partners to improve how they, they select their, their partners and where it's possible to reinforce the capacity building. We have ongoing now currently the Croix Rouge National and Croix Rouge de saint are doing a proper training for the, 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 the staff. We have also a plan from the, for the cluster next month to do a training on site planning, build back better and uh, inform partners on good construction practices and we have the support of the global cluster to dedicate one more uh, staff in the Sahel region to do coordination which is great. Next. Uh, one of the bottleneck of the response also is to have uh, um, uh, uh, the list of the beneficiary uh, in uh, this country, the government is doing the registration of uh, IDPs, which is not common most of the time. Uh, partners has to wait to get those lists from the government. We have a lot of, a lot of delay in sharing those lists. So the cluster uh, create a true series of fora discussion with uh, 
the authority in charge of uh, the registration to improve the, 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 deal, the, the time the time to provide the list of beneficiary and uh, we also encourage uh, all the partners together with the government to have a proper process for the validation of the beneficiary by doing uh, a, a physical verification and by putting in place complaint mechanisms in order to improve the process of identification of beneficiary ness. Uh, Funding is uh, one of the major concerns. As I was presenting at the be beginning of uh, the presentation, we only secure 70% of the uh, resources at the middle of the year, which is very low comparing to what we have secured last year. The financial capacity provided by the partners stand around 10 million, where we know that uh, the needed budget for the response is 57 million. Uh, in order to continue monitoring uh, the capacity of the partners, we develop a partner capacity mapping and uh, we improve uh, our contact with donors uh, to inform them on the progress and the gap of regularity. Last year, we succeed to increase the attention on Burkina situation by developing an advocacy note through the global shelter cluster SAG which help us to have more attention. We have series of partners who increase their resources after this advocacy note. Next. So I will leave the floor to Zeze to, to, to explain a few pictures we took on, on the field. Zeze, over to you. Okay, thank you, Briggs. And uh, here are just uh, some um, photos of for the shelters that we construct in Burkina Faso, just for illustration. Uh, the first photo is a Sahel shelter, and the other one is a semi durable shelter made with a bricks. Slide. Here is a um, NFI distribution. So we can see the package that's uh, up there in the first pictures and uh, has been distributed to the IDPs. Slide. And uh, here. We, in the implementation of the shelter NFI project in Burkina Faso, we do consider beneficial participations and we do have, we do usually have a meeting with uh, uh, IDPs to get a view. They are part of uh, the whole planification process, the implementation and the monitoring and evaluation of the project. Slide. Uh, I can now say over to you for questions and comments, but you can just go for the next slide, please. Next, here are the names of the cluster partners in Burkina Faso here. So, and uh, all the documents concerning Burkina Faso operations can be found here for those who don't have access to the sh uh, shelter close to website, you can see here the link so you can access to all those documents. So over to you for questions and comments. Thank you for listening. Over to you, Brett. Uh, we already we already have one cash question in the in the test. Um, um, Henri is asking, in view of security, accessibility and staffing issues, will the Burkina Faso operation be able to absorb more funding if it were available? Thanks, Henri, for your question. Um, as I showed in the presentation, uh, we, we targeted only 93,000 households. Uh, and we also uh, only secured actually uh, uh, resources for less than 11 uh, households for the whole, whole country. So with the lack of resources, we are doing like three times series of prioritization to tackle the, the people in need. So I will definitely say yes, there is a possibility to absorb more funding. Uh, and comparing to last year, last year the capacity of the response was low 
and we have more resources and we were able to, to respond. And this year, the resources are lower, so I definitely will be able to, to absorb. And currently, we are trying to improve the coordination in the location where the number of um, uh, IDPs are high. So in terms of staffing, we, we are trying to increase. We have also training. Uh, to, to shelter partners to improve their capacity to, to have better quality of response. So I hope that I address this question. If there is any other question. Yeah, I can hear you. Yes, yeah, yeah. Thanks, thanks, please, uh, for the presentation and uh, what you do, of course, and um, this answer. Uh, very uh, instructive. Uh, I would like to, to remain a bit on the funding uh, part. So, as you showed, uh, we, we have the emergency uh, uh, shelter part, um, which is OK as a response, but not quite satisfactory in the regards of the, the long term solutions. And you have also excellent longer term solutions that you present there. So I think besides having uh, amounts of funding available now, uh, the question also comes the funding over time, so, so to have certainty over a certain period of time to set up more sustainable shelter solutions um, for more people uh, uh, of concern, especially those who will be in longer displacement or uh, uh, when we know that uh, they, they may not uh, go, go back to their place of origin uh, uh, over over long time, so they need to be somehow integrated in, in uh, host environments. Thank you. Thank you, Henri. Uh, uh, on, the, on the durable solution, definitely there is a challenge. Securing land, uh, secured land is a very big challenge. However, we have to put things in context. Uh, uh, while uh, people have challenge to secure, uh, secure land, there is a lot of space in Burkina Faso. It's not like there is no space. The challenge we are having is that people are asking a humanitarian to pay money to secure those land, which we may not do. However, we, we have a good move uh, recently from the government side to create task force to think about how to secure better land for the displaced population and which may be helpful to, 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 to have more space to construct durable shelters. So I will definitely say that the rate might be low, but however, there is a, uh, a potential opportunity to secure land in the, in the near future. Uh, so I will definitely encourage uh, continuously uh, uh, donors to evaluate resources for, for also those options. Do we have any other question coming from uh, participants? Yes, yes I, I, can, I can see the hands, so take the floor and just ask the question, please. Is Angel. Yes, uh, thank you, Brice. I just have a quick question regarding the challenge that you presented on the uh, beneficiary lists and a bit about the dependency from uh, government officials and, and so on. And um, what steps are being taken to ensure that, you know, the that the lists are correct, that they meet the criteria that are required and if there is anything else that can be done to make them more um, independent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Pascal, for the question. Um, as I mentioned, having uh, uh, the list of beneficiary is uh, a concern not only for the shelter cluster, but even for the other cluster. So uh, we have uh, a joint intersectorial approach under the leadership of UNHCR recently. We have a workshop with uh, the government authority in charge of the registration of IDPs to better define the process and the timeline to, sec to, to secure uh, on the short term the list of beneficiaries. This uh, uh, workshop has been ended with uh, a, a clear document, document, which will be from now a kind of uh, orientation guideline for both government and humanitarian partners 
to deal with these issues. But definitely there is a need to increase a kind of collaboration at a regional level to increase an interaction with uh, the regional authority in charge of re registration and uh, create a better connection with them so that they can uh, uh, accelerate the, the provision of those lists. One additional thing so the shelter have, have improved recently is uh, to see how we can create a process which is less dependent of the government. Uh, I'm not saying that we are leaving the government, but uh, the idea is to have uh, a kind of delegation of authority so that uh, the process is more inclusive and participatory approach, including not only the IDPs, the government, the humanitarian, but also uh, of the host communities who are taking care of the displaced community. And they will be part of the whole process of identification of beneficiaries. We are trying through the the working group in charge of retrievability to affected population to increase the complaint mechanism system uh, in series of region is is more uh, properly done in location where we have more dedicated partners like uh, in uh, the central north region but uh, we are working to improve the complaint mechanism also in other locations so that we can actually make sure that the process is uh, more transparent and more uh, participatory uh, way, doing in a more participatory way. Thank you very yes. much. Yes, in addition to what Bruce just said, we also have a, a validation committees that we put in place where we get a list. This committee have to go through uh, the list a confirm together that this list, uh, uh, these people on the list are, P, uh, are IDPs. And this committee is comprised the humanitarian actors, IDP representative, host community representative, and the government representative. The, the team can, when the list is provided by, the, by Action Social, this team sat and uh, analyzed and agreed before uh, before starting the the, pro the the implementation of the project or giving the project to the IDPs. Yes, thank you. Over to you, please. Is there any other uh, question or the, the presentation is too clear? We would like to have more question or more comment improve uh, feel free to answer the question in French as well we can we can answer so yeah I mean, indeed, Brice, if you can, if you can hint in French, I mean, uh, the presentation was in English, but if anybody has or feels free to, to make a question in French, please do so. I guess maybe no more questions. So in which case, Brice uh, and Cece, thank you, thank you very much for uh, for the fantastic uh, presentation and to keep us abreast on the situation in uh, in Burkina Faso. Um, we will share the presentation and the recording in the website, so this is available for you and pass on to your colleagues who are interested to um, to see it if they were not able to join given the vacation period. And uh, also to announce that we will continue on country presentations next week with uh, with South Sudan. So those who are interested, same link uh, next week, same time uh, for uh, for South Sudan. Other than that, I don't know if you have any last uh, words, please. Thank you, Pascal. Thanks all for the time dedicated for this presentation. We will uh, also be available uh, to to answer any question even after the presentation uh, and see you.
Thank you very much, uh, Pris and Cese. Thank you. And bye bye to all. Thank you. And see